In the previous step, we finished the material for the sticker we put onto the cap. Let's work on the label and the material, which we will project or bend actually around the bottle. So here's a previous model. I'm, I will switch actually my cursor to that position, go on to a new layer, and I will create a new plane. And then I will change, for example, the dimension X to 10 centimeters by three centimeters, because I know that's actually the size I need for my label to fit on. The label I will show you in Illustrator is also exactly 10 by three. So obviously your mesh has to be 10 by three. Then in edit mode, uh, Rx and 90. And maybe at this point now, let's take a look at the bottle. How is this positioned? This is pretty good. Maybe let's move this out a tick there. And we can see that the bottle is not perfectly vertical. So this means we have to add a little bit of subdivision there. But this is a straight edge and we can't really take us the surface and bend it around. So maybe in this case, what we will do is also maybe add few few loop cuts, maybe like this and enter. Okay. So now we have somewhat the amount of vertex points we need to kind of wrap this thing around the bottle. But before we do this, actually, let's make a, a jump to Illustrator so I can show you the texture I have. So for example, here, I have two different ideas. So maybe here, let's say this could be a transparent background, black text and the image. Or for example, here, I just work with, uh, with an image which we will glue uh, around the bottle and then everything that's white right now, for example, should be transparent. In the previous video, we finished the Illy logo for the cap. Let's focus in this video on how to create the label and the texture so we can perfectly bend and wrap it around our bottle. I have here a previous quick mock-up and I don't know if actually this object has the correct dimensions. So I will just place my 3D cursor at that position, go to a new layer and then simply create a new plane. For the moment, let's actually go to Illustrator. So here are two different ideas, maybe an image and all the text that's white and the this label that's white should, for example, be transparent. Or for example, here, some beans on the left side, black text, and maybe the, the, the white background could also be transparent. Let's work with this one for the moment, because there are some interesting creative possibilities we can do here. So this label is actually 10 uh, centimeters white and three centimeters tall. So that number is very important to memorize. So we're going to Blender. This mesh actually has to be 10 centimeters wide and three centimeters tall. And then we can go into object mode, RX90, go to, uh, sorry, edit mode, and then go back into object mode. And then we will apply the scale. So now this is really a truly 10 centimeters by three centimeters mesh. Let's take a look at where our bottle is. Okay, so for example, I would like to bend this label first. So we could go to simple deform uh, and bend and hmm doesn't really work the way it should be. And that's simply because we have exactly four points. We need additional horizontal points so the software better can move all these points, bend it, so you get this uh, shape of an arc. So there are two ways how we could do it. Subdivision surface, move this one up, simple, 
and for example increase the amount of steps. Let's take a look. Okay, this looks pretty good. Perfect. So now actually you see we have enough polygon points or vertices to just accurately bend it around. So maybe I will go 100, 180, yeah, something like this. Maybe let's move this one up a tick, okay, and maybe I, I move this one out there, and maybe I make this one 175, so it, there's a small gap between the bottle and the label. This object also currently is faceted, so in object mode we can press spacebar and type in shade and smooth. And now we will add shrink wrap, select the bottle as the target, project, and I think negative, and then let's have a small offset. Um, there. Let's work with this for the moment. Okay, because the bottle actually is not very fine, so this mesh actually currently will intersect a little bit. Uh, we can fine tune those settings later, but for the moment this is okay. Perfect. So how do we start with the materials? So let's select the label and make a material, label, okay, and I would like to create a texture for the diffuse material so we will go shift a texture image texture connect color to color and let's go back to illustrator because what we have to do now is we could for example save all this at once but then i have all the text already white in it uh, and maybe that's not really what i want I would like to have maximum flexibility. So I only see the image text, uh, sorry, the, the image, all the text is hidden. And this state I will export as a PNG. So don't use um, JPEG. For example, we can call this one label diffuse, diffuse simply because this is kind of like the color or I could also call color and there export. We can keep this one, for example, transparent. Okay. And let's go back to Blender there. And then we can open actually that image there. Let's make a rendering. See, it doesn't really work because we have not yet UV unwrap this one correctly. So also here, now we can load the correct image and then in 3D view, press U after you have everything selected, unwrap, and there it is. You can actually, I think, see a preview uh, of this uh, texturing of that image. And uh, instead of doing an actual rendering by simply selecting the material preview. And then actually what Blender will do is it will take most of the settings and then create a quick OpenGL preview. Perfect. Okay, that's nice. So let's go back to Illustrator. And let's say I would like to have all this text now to be cut out out of this label. So for example, I work with the negative effect uh, let's say I have really dark coffee, so I will have the letters be colored by the color of the fluid inside the bottle. So I will need to work, for example, with the transparency. So I can turn this one off. And this one currently is solid, so I might have to actually take the fill color out, make it transparent. So you see there's the rest. And then all this, I could, for example, export, a, let's say, uh, label text mask. 
Okay, export, you see here, use transparency. Okay, perfect. And let's go back to Blender. And I will make another copy of this one, Shift D, press the X, open, and then here's my logo for the text. Okay, we know we need a transparency function to make part of the label transparent. We need a mix function to mix these two together. And then from the alpha, I can pluck this one out. And there you see actually the text is white and that's all the preview. If you want to really see how the rendered result looks like, we have to go into rendered mode. And there, for example, you can see how you know, the text is all transparent. But maybe inset this field that doesn't look necessarily the way how I want. So how could I, for example, set this one up so that the text actually here is solid, the label is transparent, and the rest of the text is transparent. In this case, I can't necessarily work with the alpha value. It's a little bit too complicated. A quicker way would simply be, be this. So just turn on this image for the moment so I can see things better. So for example, this and this, let's see. Uh, I make white. So everything that white, for example, should be transparent. No, actually, oh, oh, I was wrong. This thing actually has to be white there. Okay. And good, you and you and you. So how we turn this one off. Ah, okay, good. If we turn this one off, you see the background is white. So actually this means that this text has to be black on white background. This text has to be white. And then this label that is on a white background actually has to be black. Yeah, perfect. Because we could say everything that's white, stay solid, everything and that is black be transparent. So now this actually I export. And there, use artboards, remove this, export. In this case, now I do not want transparency, I simply work with black and white. So white as a fill color. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to Blender. There. Click on this image node and then Alt R. We reload actually that image. Let's see if, if it really did. Okay. And hmm, nothing's there. Oh yeah. So you see, I use the alpha. That's obviously wrong. I can actually now use the color and pull this one out. Looks like actually the also the values are flipped. So what's transparent and what's not transparent. So what we will do is shift a color invert and set it to there. Oh, where's my text? The text is missing. Let's go back to there. Oh, I forgot to give that the color there. Okay, so let's export this one out again. Artboard and mask. Zip, zip. Export. Okay, replace. Alt R. See, I click on this image um, node and then reload it. Shift Z and there we are. There's, you know, we have actually combined those two things together. That looks pretty nice. So let's say also here, the label should have a little bit of a glossiness to it. So we have to add a glossy function and we have to do the same trick we did in the previous assignment now this diffuse material, we have to add a glossy function and then the output 
there we cut actually then the transparency out. So these things are disconnect. Shift D, move this one over, bring this one in, set this one to there, okay. And then I can take all this, move it away. Shift A, shader and glossy zero put it to there there see it already pretty nice but the reflection is very strong so another uh, shift a input layer weight and for example point two and facing connected and there it is so there you see, for example, on this rounded object, really nicely that uh, layer weight or the Fresnel effect, that this area is more reflective and to the front, it becomes less reflective. Really nice, actually. Okay. So this doesn't look too bad for our first step. Pretty nice. But one of the problems of computer graphics is that everything also tends to look so, so perfect. And that's not really how reality is. So for example, this reflection is just too clean. Well, you know, we could just maybe roughen it up a little bit. So maybe this would simulate the uh, graininess of a paper. Yeah, that could work. But now this is kind of like uniformly blurred, doesn't really have any structure to it. So we can keep actually this object be perfectly reflective and then use a texture to roughen up everything a little bit. So the way how we could do this is actually first with B, I will select all this and actually organize those parts a little bit more there. So maybe that these building blocks are a little bit easier to distinguish. So for example, here, this is my, my main material, then my, uh, my, my effects that create the transparency and then the material. And you see there's actually a displacement function. So what we'll do is just follow those steps. So shift A, and then for example, we will create another uh, texture and let's maybe select uh, this one. Okay, so we don't really know how this one looks currently. So what I will do, shift D, a diffuse, connect for example, the texture color output to the diffuse shift D connect this there and there move this together a little bit and you see now I have two material outputs so I actually have two different <laughs> materials inside one materials or two options so shift Z on there you see it switches Really nice actually if you have a complex and a simplified model. Or like in this case, you would like to f to see quickly how one function uh, visually would look like. So this one, for example, we maybe set to 100, ooh, way too big, maybe 50, maybe 10, okay, yeah. You see this vector here? This texture looks a little bit distorted. So shift A, input, texture, coordinates, and then you select, use the UV layout or vector for the vector. Okay. Interestingly, actually it looks even more stretched now, but okay. Maybe some different changes here. So this is, for example, like a procedural texture right now. So math code generates this black and white grayscale image. But I'm not really very satisfied with the way how this currently looks. So let's maybe take a look at how does the noise look like. Let's connect this 
and maybe there. And for example, the scale to 20. And this, this maybe looks a little bit more like a possible structure for how paper could look like. We also have, for example, details, so we, or less details. And you see, kind of like the effect to it. We also have distortion and such things. Let's keep it at zero. And currently, you see, this is actually a, a color texture procedure, a procedural texture. And I don't really want the color. So what I can do, uh, Shift A, and then we go to convert RGB, so red, green, blue, uh, right, green, blue, to black and white. Snap it in between. Now we actually decolorized that texture, and this actually looks pretty nice. So we're nearly uh, done. So this. I actually attach to there and then I click material output. And you might not necessarily see much right now. So in this case, now what we could do to have a quick preview, let's make everything glossy. Oh, see that? <laughs> this is actually seems to be very, very roughed up. So this looks very grainy. And that's because mm, the values for displacing that surface. Basically, it simulates a three-dimensional look or property to your surface, which would mean the reflections would be different. That value is just too big. So whatever this image, uh, sorry, whatever this procedural texture image-wise generates, I have to tone down. And one easy way is with Shift-A convert math. Don't worry, you don't have to use formulas, but we simply set this to multiply. And now what we do is, so this texture multiply by 0.5, so we lower it 50% or 0.1, we just take 10% of the strength. Oh, and you see, there actually that texture comes in, or 0.01, there actually the 3D effect is getting even softer, 0.001. Oh, there, you see, there is just something happening on the surface, very, very minimal. Okay, and that's kind of like the strength I like. Perfect, so what I can do now is from this mix shader, I plug back in the output into the surface input. And maybe this glossy 0 0.01. And the effect is actually very minimal, but if you pay attention to kind of like where the reflections are in those areas, then you will actually see that it's not a necessarily perfect surface. There's a little bit of irregularity to it. So let's see what other creative possibilities we maybe have. Uh, this and this, I actually could move to there. I can either delete it or keep it. I actually tend to keep it, so I always have a quick way to look back actually at how something looks. This is very, very helpful. But maybe what I would like to is that wherever maybe you have the beans, um, maybe it's reflective and wherever you have the shadows between the beans, uh, you do not see anything being reflective. So I might have to create kind of like another mask to decide where is something diffuse and where is something glossy. So for that, maybe let's go to the finder and this is actually the image I use. Okay. So Let's open this one in Pixelmator. It loads faster than Photoshop. And maybe I'm going to desaturate it. So in Photoshop, you have to look for the desaturation function. And then I go to curves and, for example, change the contrast a little bit. So maybe something like this. 
So I want to have a very bright image that mainly shows, for example, like shades which are kind of blackish and whitish. And this then will be my black and white mask image to decide everything is white, reflective, and everything that's um, black do not be reflective. And that's the whole trick behind it. Yeah, maybe I like this. Okay, good. So this one I export as PNG and for example, coffee beans mask reflection. And I have to go to Illustrator and bring, for example, in this texture. So Let's see, where do I have it? There. Okay. Now, this would actually be helpful to see the original size of this image, because obviously this all has to match now, otherwise the mask will not fit perfectly. So there's that corner, and then I can move this one in. Okay. That's good. Let's turn this one off for the moment. I will now draw a rectangle because this rectangle I will use as my clipping object. So the, the rectangle together with the image, clipping mask, make and there it's clipped. Perfect. Maybe a quick check if, to see if I can see any um, misplacement or misalignment, but it looks like this image actually is pretty spot on. Perfect, good. So this black and white image, now I will export. And for example, how did we name everything before? And let's say, glossy mask export white yep that's fine good now let's go back to blender i need one more of a image texture so we open it open and then glossy mask there shift d so i have shorter distances to drag and I don't change anything here. I could turn this for example off and put maybe this one in. And let's see how this one looks. Okay. So maybe I would like to invert actually the colors there. Now we see, for example, that all the outside actually is reflective and the beans, for example, are um, diffuse. So you see there are actually a lot of cre creative possibilities we, we could work with. We could actually also use this image for uh, creating kind of like a bump effect for um, this label. So for example, I take this one out. Um, let's actually go to here, there, okay. And I turn this one to 100% so I see everything being reflective. You see also that the diffuse and the glossy, they have a normal input. And this is very similar to this displacement. If I add something to the displacement inside the material output, actually the three-dimensional structure will be applied to all materials. But maybe what I want is only to have the structure applied to the glossy shader. So what I can do in this, in that situation is Shift A, uh, 
vector and then bump add this one to the normal and then insert the color into the height and there it is and strength is actually we have to lower significantly so it doesn't look too crazy and now you see low it looks like it's very inverted so maybe let's do it this way there maybe 0 0.05 a little bit less uh, see this actually starts to look believable and this is actually just a visual effect an illusion because it renders artificially highlights and shadows onto your surface that gives you the feeling of this object being like having a three-dimensional structure and you see what I do here with strength is actually the same what I did here with the multiply function for the displacement and then maybe we can push this one back in and maybe a point one to see it better yeah and there you can start getting a feeling that there is some length three-dimensionally structure wise actually happening maybe let's see everything with that this one we can remove there okay specifically in this area here where you see the nice highlights and shadows in the way how the reflection look you really get the feeling actually that this is just not a, a flat label but actually that there is a three-dimensional structure to it and as you can see there are really many many ways how you could combine things and again that, that that's actually why this uh, note layout <clears throat> sorry is really so useful because you can quickly rearrange everything shovel around and get really quickly different results with only a few mouse clicks it's a little bit intimidating at the beginning maybe when you're not really used to it but it's a very logical process and with time you will see this will become really like second nature to you i personally could not imagine not having access to something like this because for me visually this is first easier to understand i have more possibilities to make cross connections compared to for example a, a standard dialog where you have top down and you can only click options but you can't really create other relationships between all these different elements.